Hello, Project Nerd fans. We're here at Tallgrass Film Festival in Watch a Wichita, Kansas, uh, to talking to another great group of filmmakers here. I'm joined by David Phillips, David Phillips, and Adam Cushman, and we practice the names a million times over, and I still mess them up right there on the easiest part. Um, but how are you gentlemen doing today? Doing Fantastic. Great. Awesome, awesome. So we're here to talk about The Maestro. Uh, a movie that I am super excited for. One of the ones I was most excited for coming into this weekend. Up for the uh, Stubbornly Independent Award as well. Um, so why don't you just give our fans who aren't aware of it a little introduction to what it's all about. Sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Maestro's a story about a composer, real-life composer named Mario Castelnovo Tedesco. Uh, he immigrated to L.A. in the 40s with his family, escaping the Nazis, and um, went to work for MGM where he composed something like 350 films over his career and got credit for seven. And um, most notably was known for uh, being a teacher and was the teacher of some of the world's greatest film composers like John Williams and Henry, Man Henry Mancini, Andre Previn, Goldsmith, Nelson Riddle, Randy Newman, long list. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. a big list. And it, uh, it looks at a relationship he has with one of his um, students who didn't go on to become world-renowned, but through his mentorship uh, really evolved into an artist. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Well, that sounds, like I said, it sounds fascinating and everything. And it is a narrative, yeah. right? So it's, I, I just clarify, because there are a lot of great documentaries here as well, mm -hmm. Tallgrass, but a, a narrative piece, uh, again, it's, it, I'm excited for the venue to it's shown out. The Roxy's pretty cool and yeah. stuff, so... Uh, what are you, what are your roles in the movie? What are you, what are you guys? Wh how did you guys? What did you guys do? I know usually multiple roles. Uh, well, I was the producer, and uh, with that, you know, obviously with a low budget, you end up doing a lot of different mm. roles on that. But let's just say producer. Okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, director, editor. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, tell us a little bit about the cast. What was it like working with some of these people? How how excited were they to be a part of this project? Uh, we were very fortunate with our cast. I mean, uh, you, you say that all the time as a filmmaker, but this one in particular was something pretty special. Uh, Leo Marx was a—he's done a ton of theater, but it's actually his first film. He had done a short with Adam, and yep. uh, Adam uh, fell in love with him, and uh, was was very adamant on him playing uh, the role. And uh, I agreed once I saw his work as well. Yep. And then uh, with Xander Berkeley as the maestro himself. Uh, we were really fortunate. Uh, you know, it was during the. Uh, he was on The Walking Dead. I had done a film with him previously, and we had a pretty good relationship. So I just kind of hit him up to maybe play a smaller part, a couple days type of thing, you know, just to get him out and it'd be kind of fun. Uh, but he read the script and he just really, really responded to it. And he was currently off from The Walking Dead. So he was like, Is there. Uh, is there a way I, I could maybe, uh, <laughs> would you consider me for that? And so I told Adam, and right away we're like, hell yeah, that'd be amazing. Um, and yeah, and then with, with Xander Berkeley came his wife, Sarah Clark. Um, Sarah Clark, uh, you know, a phenomenal actress with a, an amazing resume, um, but she has a degree in Italian, which... Uh, in the movie, his wife is Italian, mm -hmm. and so we were like, "Well, you works know, perfectly." Play your <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that and, it, and on top of that, then the chemistry is already there. Exactly. Huh? exactly. Yeah, yeah, and and exactly. it was it was great having them both there, and uh, and yeah, and then uh, you know all the uh, secondary and tertiary roles uh, kind of were people we'd worked with in the past, or people that we'd you know wanted to work with and mm -hmm. had a connection to, and it all just kind of came together in that way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, the casting was one of the most fun parts for for me, mm -hmm. really, because I mean we. You know, once the snowball effect started with certain character actors, we got more and more, and, and it was just fun sort of casting them in their non-traditional roles, you mm -hmm. know, going against what they usually play. I don't think Xander's ever played a part like this. No, I mean, that was uh, another thing. You know, Xander was like, you know, I play all these terrible bad guys yeah. all the time. Yeah. And on The Walking Dead, he plays, like, the biggest scumbag. Mm -hmm. But uh, he was like, you know, that's why he was, he was really responded to this. He was like, you know, I'd love to play this influential, lovely man uh, who had his own you know, idiosyncrasies and stuff. So he was, he was just dying to tackle that. And he, oh, he brought I mean, so he, much to he, it. we've won, he's won awards and it's just been great to, to, to see the response to his performance. Yeah. As a yeah. fan of movies, I think one of the coolest things to see is when you see a, an, a face, you know, and they're usually that type. And then you watch this movie you weren't expecting and they get in there and you're like, Wow, never exactly. saw them as that. So that is an exciting totally, thing. Yeah. It's, it's a pretty one. cool thing. Well, that's kind side. of the fun thing, too, is that like even at some of these festivals, some fans of The Walking Dead or fans of his earlier work come out, and they're just, you know, what the? Yeah. Didn't yeah. see that coming. Didn't <laughs> you see know? that, right? Uh, which is great. Awesome. Well, yeah. you, you mentioned earlier, you know, a lower-budget film, independent movie. So with that comes the passion of wanting to make this, because there was nobody just saying, here's a big check and do this. And you're like, all right. It's mm. something you wanted to do. So what made you guys say, we need to do this project. Let's get this out there. Uh, for me, it was uh, uh, the executive producer. It, it's a story about his father. 
Oh, his father okay. trained with this uh, master composer, and so he had found a bunch of old letters uh, between them talking not only about art but about life and the influences and, and what pursuit of success is and that sort of thing. And then, uh, you know, and then our executive producer wrote the script, and, you know, and then you know, Adam uh, jumped in and, you know, was a part of it and so I'd want to work with Adam I love the script and so for me it was just like okay let's let's do this I love the themes and and what, what it was all about yeah I mean for me there were so many reasons I mean working with David you know uh was one but certainly you know the the challenge of it because when you got the script and I showed it to people I mean and even while I was working on it people were like there's no way you're gonna be able to pull this period you can't do that I'm like you can do that you just have to want to do that okay. And, you know, be very, you know, clever in your choices and very specific in your blocking. And um, it's certainly possible. But that and and the research involved, I'm not musical. I don't have a background in music at all and knew nothing. Um, so delving into Mario's work as well as, you know, the people around him, he was very close with Stravinsky. He was very close with Segovia and, and just sort of immersing myself in, in music for five, six months was rewarding and the first time I've ever done that as a director. Yeah, so I, I was going to ask that too with the music being such a big role of it. How much, I mean, was there music being played on set? Was there, stu you know, the scenes? Oh, it, yeah. Is it influential throughout the movie and everything like that, too? Yeah. Uh, one of the things I was really excited about it was uh, right right from the get-go, Adam wanted to use as much of Mario's actual yeah. music in the film was, as possible. You got my next question already. Um, right there, uh, because uh, and I just thought that was such a great idea. Here's this composer that's only been recognized for about seven movies. Uh, and it, it was actually the 50, it, this year's the 50th anniversary of him passing away. And now he has a movie coming out that he composed. Um, so, so that that was that was great. Like, you, Adam was very diligent in finding the right music for the right scenes, and it was just really exciting. And then, um, and then, yeah, I'll, I'll let you. I'll let well, you jump it, in there, yeah. as far as Mario's music, it was sort of permeating in my consciousness over you know the the five six months that I was that I was working on it mm -hmm. and putting it together. And um, it seemed you know apropos that he should score his own film. Yeah, it seemed in all in all fairness, definitely. Um, but the pieces just they fit, you mm -hmm. know, and they fit. And we got very lucky that um, you know it was a series of guitar pieces that we used uh, predominantly, and there was one really for every moment that just sort of fit wonderfully. But there was a, there was a, effectively a few strains to the music um, in, in a film that ultimately is really about music. Um, we had you know the the score, but we also had um, an onset composer uh, named Lucas Eberl who. Oh man, this guy did so much. He, I mean, he did something like forty-eight cues in two weeks. So he's 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 a genius, and I was very <laughs> fortunate that uh, he was a part of a friend group uh, when I first moved to Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and uh, we had stayed in touch. And uh, he just was so excited about this opportunity. So he did a lot of the compositions that wasn't Mario stuff, um, and within the actual piece. And uh, he, he's you know uh, at times he was the hand double for Leo Marx for the more complex mm -hmm. things, and then he also played a role in the film uh, as well, uh, which he's also an actor and he's done a ton of things too. So. It, yeah, he was just yeah. a, he's a genius. Yeah. So what do you think, um, you know, as we talked about a little bit before the interview, uh, the history major focus was on World War II. To me, this stuff fascinates me. In a Polish background, you mentioned the family coming over. That's the whole reason my great-grandparents brought my young grandparents over to this country as well and why I'm here, I guess. Mm -hmm. So how do, you, how do you feel all of that part of his life influenced him? To, as you said, he taught so many other people. It felt like he just wanted to give to a lot of other yeah. people. Do you think that was a major influence? How do you think that drove that? I, I, he was a towering figure in the musical industry. I mean, uh, uh, most people in the musical world know who he is, I think, um, at least the people I've spoken with. But he, he was more than just a teacher. He was a huge influence on people who were established mm -hmm. as well. So, I mean, Stravinsky would come by his house just to hang out. You know, Segovia would come and, and just play for him, uh, you know, his new compositions to see what he thought. He would send students to him. Uh, there was a period where, um, even though Mario loathed jazz entirely, um, jazz musicians would be sent to him to, you know, show him what they were doing, and he would critique them. And he, uh, as a result, became known as the father of West Coast jazz, even though he didn't like it. Well, that if you don't like it, then you, you can influence some change in yeah. it then perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> so awesome. And, and in his teaching, like a lot of his teachings are, are more than just like you know, about syncopation or about, you know, the, the finer points of music. I think what's what's really fascinating is that it's more about the journey of an artist and about yeah. your life mm -hmm. and not 
putting your life's journey into a bubble and trying to play something. It's no, bring that out. And, and, and every artist has their own voice. And I think that he was definitely influenced by the life that he had f for his voice. And he, it's one of the things that he always stressed was, that, you know, every artist has their own voice and the own person that they are to bring out. And uh, and that's uh, you know pretty beautiful thing. So, I think so. Yeah, I yeah think and so. it, and it asks what it what it means to be successful. I mean, mm -hmm. what, what does it mean to be validated? Is getting validated by you know studios and and executives is that is that the key to success, or is it just playing like yourself, you know, and and expressing yourself truly and and nakedly and openly and you know, what makes you an artist? Definitely. Yeah, it, it sounds like like you said, those of us that are outside of that world. His name's not super familiar, but all the other names you're bringing up, it's yeah. like, wow, what, what an influence, what mm -hmm. a part of that world he was. So I could sit here for another hour probably and talk to you guys about this <laughs> and how excited and passionate you guys are. You probably could too, but mm -hmm. other people who want to talk to you probably wouldn't be happy with me. About it. So I'm gonna, <laughs> we're going to wrap this up here. But uh, for those that obviously aren't here at the festival, is there other festivals over the next couple months that the Maestro will be showing at? Uh, this is actually our final festival. Okay. This is the final leg of the journey. So, uh, so we're then going we're, out with a bang with tall grass, which is a, a phenomenal way to end. Uh, uh, you know, yeah, we've yeah. had a great run and it's a great festival Perfect. and then um it's a uh we're very close to having some really good news as far as distribution stuff is concerned, but it's not 100% yet. I, but, I got uh, you. We're close. Yeah, so. keep a lookout you, for the you maestro. You almost heard it first here <laughs> on Project Yard. So, uh, where, yeah. But where can they hear that news when it does come out? Uh, you know, the they can find us everything. on Facebook, the maestro, and then we also on Twitter, we're at maestro underscore movie. Um, or uh, take, take a look at Adam Cushman or... Xander Berkeley, uh, you know, another thing that's really great is that how supportive all the actors have been about this project. Um, and, and we're very grateful, but yeah, uh, it'll be out there if, uh, if awesome. you follow us. Yeah. Awesome. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining thank us you. today. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Thank you so much. For all of you, we'll catch you at the next interview.